Okay, how do we get started? Engineers and scientists often develop models to represent a physical design or problem so that they can study the model, understand how it works, and develop a solution. Let's see if this helps us. We'll develop a model for the wires and cables in a 747 airplane so we can learn how they work, what might go wrong with them, and see how we can determine if there are any issues. To get started, we'll use some of the knowledge you have from a previous circuits class. Let's consider two electrical components that we want to connect in the airplane. Imagine one of these electrical components is a signal generator, shown on the left here. In our case, we'll assume a switch in the cockpit using, a power, using power generated by the engine is used to generate the electrical signal. In general, the generator may have an internal resistance, as shown here, with a composite value of Rg. We want to send an electrical signal from the generator to a load, which in our case is a circuit controlling the fuel flow sensor in the fuel tank. This load is shown on the right, and it is represented by a resistor, RL, because there is some power loss at the fuel flow sensor. sensor. Now in the model we're creating to study these electrical connections in the airplane, can we just directly connect these two pieces together? Would that be a good representation of what we have in the airplane? Sure, why not? We could just connect these two components. The signal would travel directly from the cockpit to the fuel flow sensor. This representation is what you might have used in a typical circuits class. In circuits class, you used what is called lumped element circuit theory, which assumes that all of the components of your circuit are concentrated in one position in place, in space. When you use lumped element circuit theory, you ignore any spatial dimensions, like distances between components. In other words, when you use lumped element circuit theory, you completely ignore the short black lines connecting the circuit components on the bottom of the screen. This makes the mathematics easier, because then you only have one variable in your equations, time. But what about the second question we asked? Is a direct connection a good representation of how the signal generator in the cockpit is connected to the fuel sensor located by the fuel tanks? I'm showing here an image from earlier. We can see the fuel tanks are in the wings of the airplane, fairly far away from the cockpit. This means that the generator and fuel flow sensor are much further apart than the electrical components typically studied on the same circuit board in a circuits class. As a result, this diagram probably represents our situation in the airplane more closely. Long black lines representing the long wires extending all the way from the cockpit to the fuel tank. Under what conditions do you think it would be important to account for these long black wires, uh, these long black lines representing the length of the wires?